Hi, I'm Mike Brower. I'm a record mixer. So you may know some of the things that I've done on some of the things that I've developed. Brower Eyes is one of them where it's more about mixing into compression as opposed to mixing in pre-compression. Um, I use several different sub-stereo buses without having to get technical into it. It just gives more independence between instruments. I also founded the Mix with the Masters some 11, 12 years ago, and it's been really, really great because so many people from all over the world have access to engineers like myself and many of my friends, um, and it's been it's just been a great, great experience for so many people, including myself, because I learned so much from when I had these participants for a week. Uh, so it's been, it's been really great. And the records I've done, I'm sure you've probably heard some of the Luther Vandross or Aretha Franklin, James Brown, um, Coldplay, The Kooks, John Mayer, and so on. Many, many records over the years, over 44 years, tend to mix a lot of records. I think probably the racks that um, I had for so many years was probably more well-known than myself. I had six, seven big, huge, double-sided racks, and I loved them. The, I had great compressors in them, great EQs, reverbs, and that was part of my sound. Those, those was part of my arsenal. Um, but over the years, I learned more about using plugins, and as they became better, I used them more often and started thinking about uh, how to get the sound I wanted by not just the hardware I had, but by a plugin. And I started using um, more of a hybrid situation. It was a point where, when I was at Electric Lady, on um, in the main room, I had the SSL, but in the live room, I actually had had set up a hybrid where I was still using a lot of my hardware, but not the console. So I had a artist mix or something like that that I was mixing with. And I got really good at that. It took me a good year, year and a half, because it, I'm just very, very slow at, at transitions, but I knew it was important. And then when I left, on uh, Electric Lady, I had my own studio, and the main room was the hybrid, and then the live room became completely all in the box. And so I slowly learned how to adapt everything that I still had going on in my ABCD buses that was, uh, at that point, still hardware, how to find plugins that would emulate the same things in a software situation, which was a good thing I did that because, again, it took me a good year, year and a half, and my great assistant, Fernando Reyes, was helping me uh, develop this new template. Um, when COVID hit, it was time to get out of the city for a while, and I moved upstate into... Um, my house, I turned one very large den into my studio and really, really started focusing more and more now on in-the-box mixing. And I still had some analog delays and a few other choice toys that I really, really like to use, but 99% of it now was just mixing in the box. And I started comparing what my mixes sound like ITB to the hybrid, I'd go, I'd go back, I'd find an, an old mix and then mix it in the box and then compare and it was sounding great. So I knew at that point that really the full transition of being able to mix it without any compromise, that the sonics were still big and warm and still the sound that, that I love to get and people know me for was still present even though I was now primarily all in the box. So it's been, it's been a great transition. And of course, when I first moved there, I couldn't, I couldn't be sure about the speakers yet, about the room, because it took me a little while to adapt. So that's when I said, well, I've got to use my headphones. And uh, because I knew, I knew the headphones, I knew the fives really, really well. And so in the first few weeks, I was using the headphones, 
and then I would listen to the speakers, I'd go back to the headphones, I'd mix something, then I would send it to Joe Laporta, my mastering engineer, see if he had any comments on how the low end or the mid range or the top, and things were really, really going well. And then eventually I started trusting the room. I already love my, my ATCs, but again, just how I was acting in the room. I have very, very little for hardware. Uh, again, I mean, it's all primarily in the box. So I have the, the Motor City EQs, I have my Binson delay, and I have a couple other different types of delays. Whenever I need them, I'll just fire them up, use them, print them, turn them back off. Um, I have these great two sets of MXR phaser flangers that I'll put in and that all of that stuff comes up as hardware plugins. So, um, you know, I just look down, <coughs> go to IO, pop the MXRs across a road or something. Sounds great. I print it and I move on. But I just don't really need on um, much gear anymore because what I have of with all the companies making such great great plugins that are they they don't the GUI isn't like just only identical <laughs> it also sounds great and more than sound the feeling is what I'm what I'm looking for from that particular piece of gear and there's no problem there at all they just between UAD and waves and some of the other ones uh, I'm, I've got my ABCD covered. I've got everything I ever use that I used to use in the hardware. And it's great because I could have never gotten all that gear into my house. So <laughs> the fact that I spent the last couple of years really learning more and more how to transition, again, with the help of great past assistants, you know, who said, Michael, you got to learn this. And I was like, no, 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 you've got to. <laughs> and so slowly, you know, I learned how to replace the console and still get the same sound of the SSL by using like Plugin Alliance, for example, putting the plugins, they're all the SSLs. I just put them all across every track. So it, it still feels and sounds like my SSL console um, and Plugin Alliance. I mean, there's many people who do the, the SSL, but 4000 is great, but the 9000 is the one that I lived on for you know for good 20 years and they've just done a great great job of of making a super super good sounding um, plug-in i really don't miss the ssl i don't miss the fact that buttons would go bad and, <laughs> and scratchy sounds and you know or the ssl you know it, it's just i'm gonna be ssl supporter my whole career, which is, you know, which is why I still have SSL across it. But if I wanted to hear more of a Neve sound on a song, I could just replace all those with with Neve channel strips. And it's it's just great. You can basically get any sounding console you want, as long as you know what the sounds are. You just put it across. Boom. It's um, it, it's just so efficient and and so. Um, so much more versatile today. One of the things though, throughout, throughout the whole transition going from analog, strictly 100% analog, to the hybrid, and now to all in the box, faders have always been a must. And when I first went from um, replacing the console, I had artist mix faders, right? And I had, I think, three of them. So I had 24 faders. And um, then when I moved the studio out of um, Electric Lady to my own place, I got a huge S6. And the S6 looked just like a console. There was, I think, 32 channels, had a center section. They had plenty of knobs. It had the meters, beautiful, beautiful control surface. You know, I can't say that it sounds great because they're transparent, but it looks great. <laughs> and I guess, yeah, whatever went through was just so clear and punchy. Um, 
and it was it was a great console. Once I moved up to the country, I had no room for that. So I got basically it's an S1. It's like a Rolls Royce, but you got you know wind up roll up windows and maybe no AC, but it's still a Rolls Royce. And I'm I still have the great feel of these of the faders and. I will always, always be mixing with faders because that's just part of how I mix. I, there's always a lot of movement going on and I'm not interested in trying to do that on, on a mouse. And I don't even think about the fact that it's really just a control surface. For me, I still play it like I did um, the original going all the way back to a Neve console when I was at Media Sound. Nothing has changed for me. I I'm still feel like I perform when I'm mixing. So faders will always be part of it. Thanks. This was fun.